Mm-hmm. Did you watch SmackDown? Yes, I did. So it opens up with a weird scene. There's a car accident scene outside the venue and carrying cross with someone in injury, Scarlett stood by. Then Drew showed up and attacked Cross until he was pulled away by Adam Spears and Scarlett checked her across. This is a very interesting way to open the show. But isn't it a little bit weird because Drew's a baby face, but do you look at it like, oh well, he's just getting he's just getting um Get, getting revenge, revenge back because he got f- in the right. you know, he got screwed out of the in the in the match. You haven't heard from Jesse Ventura, uh Joe. No, I have not. Send him a message, please. Okay. Because he told me he would come on. Go ahead. So they're basically then then say that like Cross is supposed to be competing in the four way for the Intercontinental title with Ricochet, Sheamus, and Sol Sokoa. Um, Kofi and Xavier Woods make their entrance, so they do some shtick. Uh, Sami Zayn backstage is expressing his appreciation for Solo and Jey Uso showed up and spoke about Zayn not one Jay's help for his loss of money's raw. Zayn had a call from Roman and told him that they seemed like Jay could have helped. Okay, there's some not- sound coming in, Joe. You're something. kidding me. Fast forwarding something. I don't hear it. I did. Did you really? Yeah, it was like. Anything <laughs> now? No. It's good now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. okay. Well, there, there's there's a lawnmower outside my house right now. Oh, so that, 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 that might that, have that been might be that yeah. might be right. noise. Go ahead. Go ahead. But it, uh, hopefully that or it's either a blower or a lawnmower or something. Yeah, it was like a blower. Yeah. Right. Right. It's yeah. not gonna. Yeah. It's not gonna last long. So just bear bear with us on this. That's what um, <clears throat> so. Uh, <laughs> So Sammy then gets it. So so Sammy gets a call from Roman. Right. He hands the Roman the phone to Jay. Roman basically sets Jay straight, and uh, Sammy and um, Jay like go out go out for their match, right? Um, so it's Kofi against Sammy, and they do a spot. It's fifteen minutes. That's like the new thing these days, like thirteen, four, twelve, four, fifteen minute matches, like you know. Um, but they do a spot where where Kofi has Sammy rolled up. Jay slides in underneath the ropes and kicks Kofi back over and reverses the roll up and Sammy wins. And uh and basically that you know so so Jay helps Sammy win. Right. Uh, what do you think of this? Um this is what I liked. I liked the 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 backstage story cuz now there's that there's another subplot that they threw in here which I'm sure you've caught. Solo seems to like Sammy more than his own cousin. Right. And Jay ain't liking that either. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that little subplot is awesome, bro. Yes. Right. The show's so very, very, very well written. So when I hear people on WWE, bro, you're just being a because this is very well written. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. And so, and we've been saying this for two years, it ain't nothing new. So I'm loving the fact that we were right from the very beginning. And I also love um, the fact that. Even though Jay doesn't want to listen to Sammy, he still is listening to the tribal chief because he's a tribal chief. So all those little dynamics, I get a big kick out of. Do you, Disco? Yes, I do. Yeah, I, anything, uh, I watch everything Sammy does every week. If I don't see the show, I'll throw it up on YouTube. Yeah. Well, everything he does is usually with the bloodline, which is right. always excellent. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. So next, so trip, backstage, Triple H... Uh, thank the police and for the work with the accident. Ray Mysterio showed up as the cops left. Ray told Triple H to give everything that's happened with Dominic Mysterio he doesn't see a way forward. Ray said he won't fight his son, and Triple H was sympathetic. And Ray said he still sees that little boy that used to sit on his lap and fall asleep on his shoulder. Ray said he loves WWE, but he wanted to look Triple H in the eye and let him know that he was quitting. Triple H said he can't imagine what Ray is going through, but there has to be another way. Triple H asked Ray for five minutes to come up with another way, and Triple H and Ray entered Triple H's office. Uh. So this is like, you what know, do you think of this? it's a good little segment. You know, this is progression of storyline. So let me this tell is, you. This is a thread throughout the show. So we'll see. Right. So this is what I love about. WWE. Did you move your mic? Did you move your mic? Conan? This is what we both love about WWE. There's another thread. They continue the Ray Mysterio thread. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about quitting. I don't want to fight my son. Very good dialogue. They usually give way say which means absolutely nothing i'm like why is he even saying anything dude you just wasted time but now you know it felt like a genuine conversation and i like that what does that sound sounds like wind joe what's that yeah i heard that whip through but it's no longer there okay no i'm just since i switched recording setups i'm just messing with anything audio on the recorder so if things here mess i like your neon uh you know it's the only one it's the only one i had i'm like can i turn these lights off that's 
ridiculous. <laughs> I love it. Okay, <laughs> put some on your. You know what? That should be a new gimmick. <laughs> Wear some stunner shades. Put some lights on your shades. Go all out. Go all out. Yeah, Elton John. All right. <laughs> you go ahead. Um, yeah, that's what oh. I thought. It was genuine dialogue. It was a corny. What did you? What just happened, Joe? Uh, it's four nothing. Hos- there was a, a misplay at first on the last play. Now Hoskins is up one and two with two outs. He just hit a ball, almost got caught in foul territory, but the guy Soto couldn't get to it. Wow. Yeah, Soto's stinking today. Um, all right, so next is uh, all right, so I, I, I don't watch NXT, so all this stuff is foreign to me here, right? Roxanne Perez, whoever that is, Roxy spoke, Roxy spoke with Shotzi, who introduced to Raquel Rodriguez, and Perez said she wanted Rodriguez to face Cora Jade. In the pick your poison match on her behalf, of course, Rodriguez said. I think they're they're integrating the shows more. Yeah. So I think because they think they maybe did they... that in, they did that in another they did that in another match where somebody from NXT came and they wanted them to represent uh, they wanted them to represent them. I think it was Raquel Rodriguez was yeah, picked by Spider, gotta, that the, Cora they, Jade girl. They they can't assume that people know who Roxanne Perez and. Core right, Jade are, right, right, but it's a smart way of cross pollinating and getting yeah. some star power on their show. Yeah. Right. So damage control showed up, and Bailey asked Perez if she was stupid. This is a very weird way they shot this because it's in a locker room, and the like the three girls that were in the shot were were like in the shot. It's a locker room, and then they panned away to where the other three girls were like standing like right next to them, and they right. acted like they just showed up and they they, they just saw them. Which is just a very weird way to shoot this, which is kind of looks look stupid, to be honest with me. Uh, to me, um, Bailey said, "Damage control would embarrass the three baby faces." So whatever. I mean, I'm you know, absolutely no zero interest in any of this stuff. Uh, but what about you? Zero interest. Zero interest. Unentertaining. I always say it, and I'm going to repeat it, bro. They invest a lot of time in these girls who are not over one lick. But go ahead. So next is uh oh god, Soto's have more problems with the sun. They caught it. Okay, so next is a squash Braun Strowman in a handicap match against you ready? Yeah. James Maverick. Who? Nice. And Brian Thomas. Who? So he he kills these guys and afterwards almost an MVP appeared in the crowd. Almost looked good in a suit, to be honest. Right. You know, it looked a lot it right. looked yeah. Like he looked more distinguished. Guy. Yeah, he looked like a big giant guy in a suit, you know, and him and MVP right, but, were like. But it, he looked good, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, they walked on the sets and watched from behind the barricade. And Stroman glared at them before power bombing one hands the rest on the other. Stroman put his foot on one of the wrestlers and got the pin. While Cole said he put the two jabronis away. <laughs> so, I thought that, that was, was hilarious. Good. Yeah, it was a good. Line. <laughs> I thought that after, was after hilarious. After the match, MVP had a mic and took issue with Stroman's Monster of All Monsters moniker. And MVP said that Stroman would look normal if he stood next to Omas. MVP's mic cut out while he told Strowman that some monsters are better off staying in the shadows. And Strowman barked at both men from the ring while Cole repeated the MVP line that was cut off by the mic. Okay, so, I'm going to assume you're probably not even at the least bothered by this, but are you really entertained by the fact that almost is still in squash matches? <laughs> you mean, no, almost is not in squash. Braun Strowman is. They're, Braun, they're still Braun, doing squash. Both, both of them. Right, both right. of them. Okay. I, I, a squash. Well, listen, a squash. Here's what you should do. Okay. You do a deal where, you know, maybe two – is this a tag match? Let's hypothetically say it's – it's um, The king of the, the squash matches, the Steiners. Well, just – no, no, just saying. Like, so, like, like, let's say it's just, uh, the Los Lotharios versus the Mans- Masaya Mensua. Right. Okay, they have a match. The heels – you know, it's a heel versus heel match. So the heels – one of the heel teams goes over a healing way – they're arguing with each other. Bronze music plays. One heel team comes over and says, hey, what are you doing? He squashes them. And then because he, he squashes all four guys. He grabs the mic, says, like, hey, I'm, I'm here to fight. I, I want to fight the champion. Like, he cuts a promo saying, I'm here to do something. And then almost comes out with MVP. Right. But just like doing a squash match is like, you know, bro, the, the, there's still – we did. We did. We actually did like research on this back from 25 years ago, right? When when we were looking at the minute by minutes, bro, matches were like squash matches. People change the channel. Well, they yeah, just, but let they me, just do. But let me. But I mean, let like, me tell know, you one thing. If you're gonna squash somebody, squash them right. Because right. they squash them with high spots. You're supposed to go in there and just beat the f- out of them. No high spot. No f- cool moves. Is you right. just clubber the. F- 
fuck out of them, beat them to a pulp like the, you, the, you look the like scene not, in Godfather not actually, Jimmy not Khan actually, beat the guy with uh, the trash can. Like you like treat that. them like they're not workers. They're just regular people. And you're beating like they're marks and you're beating them. Right. You just right, beat right. the fuck out of them. That's a squash right. match. Right. Right. And so uh, and, and I'm not entertained by very tall guys, very muscular guys, overweight guys beating up real small guys right. that you don't have no choice. There's no nothing There's, in that. No unless way, like, you know oh. we're uh, right unless he was gonna be doing something really really wild like remember when what was that guy's name um joe because you're the ecw guy uh the canadian guy that was a, a partridge family bus mike awesome mike awesome remember he had this finished disco where uh -huh. he would pick you up in the like the what was that thing that hall did this what was it called the, the razor, razor's edge razor edge and yeah. he would razor edge you out of the ring through a table outside Unless right. you're going to do a end the squash match like that, it should just be straight up. Yeah, I agree. Drury just hit one out. It's 4-1. I, I know. I saw okay. that. Yeah. For some other reason, my, my TV just froze. Whatever. Uh, so next is... Uh, um, oh, I'd also like to say another thing, bro. I think it's hilarious, and I've said it before, and it's worth going back and watching. Watch how funny hmm. Strowman runs. Throws, yeah, he says he's when, clumsy, kind of. Right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> he shouldn't be running. <laughs> yeah. So next is uh, Sami Zayn was talking solo backstage when Jey Uso asked Sami to show him some gratitude. Sami said he won the match all on his own and said he wished Jey would give him credit for once. And Jey asked Sokoa to back him up. Sokoa said he was watching Sami because he could learn a lot from him. And Sami fired up the boat at the four way match nah. first shot at the international the Intercontinental Championship. So that's like, yeah, there's like this part of the storyline is so right. solo is like like <laughs> like Sammy more than Jay, you know? Right. That's great. Uh so Maxine Dupree, she's hot. Sit on the stage and introduced Massey Mansois. Cole set up a video package to recap Max Dupree standing over the models and telling Maxine his name is LA Knight. Right. Uh so LA Knight comes out and he wrestles uh Mansois. Um and basically, beats he beats Mansoir in uh, in two minutes fifty five seconds. He gets a mic after the match, and he started his promo saying, "Let me talk to you." Knight told the crowd he didn't do it for them. He said he didn't need a bunch of swamped up to chain his name. And Knight looked hmm. in the camera and said he's putting the entire WWE roster on notice, and said he could all get their ticket punch and close with his "Yeah" line. So, bro, this was good. This was short but good. He's he's going to be a phenomenal asset. Bro, he, he, can, he, he can looks talk. great, and he looks great. He looks the part. He Dude, looks like a. He looks like a. He he works like he works. His work is solid. Right. He looks the part. He's great in the major mic. league when, talker. And, and this is this is why this charismatic. Is, this is why this product is really good right now. Look, acts like a star because they have guys that are good on the mic and can make you interested in their match that's coming up. Right. So that's, that's and he, and he knows how to act like a star, bro. Right. Yeah. Uh, so right. Okay, so damage control against Raquel Shotzi, Roxanne Perez. <sighs> Six minutes. Damage control goes over. I'm. Um, I mean, yeah, whatever. Okay, so I had a little bit of an interest in this match because Roxanne. This is just a little backstory. She or Roxy. I first saw her when she's around like 16 years old, and Daga and Tessa were training her in. And so I wanted to bring her to Mexico, but she was too young. So now to see her in NXT, you know, it's pretty cool. She's a Puerto Rican girl, but she's really tiny because uh, I forgot how small she because that EO Sky is mm -hmm. really tiny when she stands next to the listen to this name. What a name to have the Pixie Princess. Oh and like God. that, you're just a little thing, dude. That's right. what they call that Candice LeRae girl. Mm -hmm. Right. And and so one day I, and she's real small because I've stood next to her and she, and she's her height. Ayo Sky is uh, Candace's height and Roxy's a little bit smaller than, than the really let me just, small. Let me, you, let, me, let, me, let me tell you a problem they have here, right? Yeah. And this is a problem with f the, the female division, okay? Is that, you know how like, like there's always, there was always that thing like with, you know, we're, we're Nash, um, yeah, the big Luger and all these guys, like they, they were always like, Kind of like saying, like, hey, the smaller guys, you really can't push them to the top, right? Right. And but the gap between the smaller performers and the bigger performers in WCW or like in the male division is not as as distant as it is in fem the female division. Right. That's a good okay. point. Okay. Cause cause the females, like, like if you look, like honestly, 
the only credible like wrestlers in the female division that look like look the part where like they can fight the other girls are like let's go over them, you know Rhea Ripley right Charlotte right Ron Ronda right um Shayna Sh- Shayna uh Raquel Rodriguez right um did you, you don't say maybe, maybe, yeah maybe. you don't think you don't think Becky looks like she could scrap no Be- Becky no. uh any well Bro, she, she she's kind of very thin she's she does very... but, but but she throws smoke when she throws she's punches. like r- it ass, like, yeah. she, like if she punched you with one of those uh, shots it could, she barely uh, would get in you, you convince me but she's not somebody I think wow. but, but, but let's be honest there's yeah. only, there's only like seven or eight female wrestlers and here's the that, worst part you know, they're, they're trying to make all the other ones really tough too and then they don't come right. off as it's that just, you're miscasting vi- not everybody vi- can be tough dude honestly they should take the smaller girls and put them in feuds with each other right. instead of integrating in with the bigger girls you know like like none of these smaller girls should be should be and anybody should could think at, at any point they they could win it like, like even like Liv morgan like she's a champion right now but like size wise she doesn't look like she like she she'd be like that that the ninth or tenth ranked girl on that on that show if like it was a real fight, you know. So I think like the by integrating all these smaller girls with the bigger girls, it just it's just a very un you know the, not a good visual, you know. And I th- I think that's problematic. And that's bro, and that's what happens when you start like if the girls can draw and they look good and they're attractive and you can put them on the show, it's like. You're just kind of warping your suspension disbelief. Yeah, but here's the thing: you know, when you when you look at the cruiserweights and you look at the big guys in WCW, bro, you had cruiserweights that were amongst the best workers in any oh, era. Cruiserweights were, were Benoit, Eddie, Jericho, right? So, yeah. Right. Oh, there's like, but, but you're but not they were seeing this with these side. girls. Yeah, the, but you're not were, seeing this. But you're still right. not seeing this with these girls. Because you know these, these, these not, girls aren't. Are like stocky and mus- like perfect. Example. No, 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 no. Like, what I'm playing is you're not seeing the world class work, right? The, right. So they can work with like a Charlotte. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. A lot right. of them they're just very new. They're very young, and they just need to get seasoned, and they right. will get better. Some, right. you, some of them are going to be great in a few years. We'll find out w- which are the ones. You know, right. but I think they push them a little bit too early. So the Viking Raiders video shows what uh, Sarah Logan is. It's got a female in there. And she, she said that God's finally spoke and the destruction begins. Yeah, they just show the back of her head. Not exciting video by no means, but good. All right. So our boys, Santos Escobar crew, uh, Legado de Fantasma, Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro, uh, they wrestled hit, ro- hit row and they beat him. And yeah, pretty honest, quick, too. Pretty quick, in like a minute 25. And I'm just wondering if they like they, they completely sou- soured on hit row because they didn't get over. And they didn't get over. They, they haven't really... They haven't really done anything to to like connect with the fans and the show personality. And I'm just wondering if they think like, okay, like the Latino group is like, we can do something with these guys, you know? Um, well, I also but- I also would add one thing. You got to remember, a lot of people don't watch NXT. So when Legato came over, they were probably wondering who the f- are these people. They haven't shown any video on them. They haven't shown any reason why they're there. So mm-hmm. hopefully they'll get into that pretty soon. Right. So next is. Uh- the four, the, the, okay. So next is, uh, Kayla Braxton interviewed Sonya backstage and she complained about Liv being gifted repeated opportunities. And she said, Morgan was destroyed extreme rules and it shows that Morgan doesn't have it. So Morgan showed up and attacked DeVille and she dumped DeVille into a road case and slammed DeVille's head on his table several times. Morgan placed DeVille on the top of the table and then climbed a scaffolding behind the SmackDown scent, performed a senton that drove DeVille through the table and Cole wonder who's gotten into Morgan. What's gotten into Morgan? What do you think of this? I don't know. Maybe I'm being overly critical, but I think that they're trying too hard to re- rehabilitate her into like a, and I ain't uh-huh. buying it, you know? Right. And now her new move is, you know, the senton, you know, right. cause she went up to the thing and did it, but she doesn't strike me as menacing, fearful, tough, any of the above, you know, I think they right. miss, misca- they're miscasting her unless so she's next- going with, with, with Bray. Right, so next is Seamus Ricochet solo, and, and uh, Rey Mysterio made a deal with Hunter to get back in the in the in the squad here. So it's like he's uh he's in this match, um, bro. This is really this was this is one of the better four ways. I watched this match from start to finish. One of the better four ways I've seen, and that's one thing they're very they're very good at in this company. Okay, they do not do spots or like a lot of spots that have potential for botches. Like the, the 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 work is very kind of basic, a little bit slightly creative at times, 
but very simplistic to follow. And the timing is excellent on these guys when it comes to like making saves, feeding for the next spot, just like, you know, having guys get integrated to, to make it look like it's not choreographed. They do an excellent job of this. Right. Yeah, and Ray, Ray told me everybody backstage is really motivated, motivated as you can see. And that's good. I, right. I guess there's a lot of people happy with changes or whatever. And well, they're, doing just a, they're, they're, a, they're, they're giving a lot of characters, a lot of stuff to do. Right. Like, like how many characters on the show are just going out there and getting like no promo time, nothing but the week before, just like it's just a cold match. Right. Maybe one out one out of ten characters. Right. Like very rarely. Like like everything and, is and let me say one more thing, bro. Shameless or not, bro, Ray Mysterio is just ageless. Look how great yeah. he looked against Ricochet. Yeah. I mean, he went move for move with him. Ricochet I, sold great too. I know. Like the, the, I know. The finishing and, sequence was excellent work. And bro, yeah. and here's the other here's the other thing. Imagine this. I'm sure he's gotten over it now, but Ricochet, when he first met Ray, marked out like you wouldn't believe because that was his idol. Mm -hmm. And for him, it's always been a pleasure to wrestle with him. And I didn't know this was the first time Ray had wrestled with Sheamus as long as they've been there. Really? Yeah. They said yeah. it on the they one well, the, the announcer said it or I wouldn't. Well, that's known. the thing about and this is the thing where you know Seamus is a professional, right? Yeah. Because Seamus is kind of like gets his shit in and is kind of snugging everything with the younger guys. Right. You know, he was very cool with like he, right. he wouldn't clobbering Ray out there. You know, he right. just let, let, let Ray, which is good. That's right. smart. You know, these guys right. know. It's but like, I'm glad gonna, they're finally I'm yeah. got because you've seen it, bro. They have they've underutilized Ray really bad. Really, yeah. really, really bad, and they're finally giving him his respect. So I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I would say that. Well, how long ago? Because he's been involved in a long storyline for like a better part of over two years. I'm talking kid. before the two years. I was gonna say before. You know, yeah, the eye like, for an eye angle was right. stupid. So, yeah, yeah. Since, since since he's been back, right, and like re-signed, they've been very, right. So it's like, hey, let's get our money out of this guy. You know, <laughs> let's let's involve him in a lot of stuff, which he's been he's nailed it. You know, so mm. yeah. Um, so then, okay, so this is kind of, I, I don't, you know, this is, this is a new strange to me. not strange, but like this got a huge rating. So when Bray came out, so after that, you know, so, so Ray goes over, so he's got the, which is interesting. They're giving, they put Ray with, with Gunther and I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm very curious to see how they work together. Right. Cause it's Gunther, Gunther likes the lady, but Ray's 45 years old. So, it's right. like, you know, it's just like, but you know, you Ray, like, Ray, Ray will Ray, say, Ray. lay it in. That's, no, no, that's Ray, how, yeah, but, but Ray will say lay it in, and he'll take one chop and like fly through the ropes when he chops the guy. Right, taking a huge right, rub right, right. right. You don't got to chop him. Right, you don't got to chop him fifteen right, times. Right. Yeah, two or three. Ray gets it. Right, right also right, exactly. Right, <laughs> that's funny. Like, I could take two or three of those and just sell right. them huge and get a big right. pop. Right, no need to give him right. fifty of them. That's right. what I would tell Steiner. Right. I know you I'm got not, a seven suplex limit. I'm not Sheamus. Right, I would always tell Scott when we would wrestle. I would go. I know you got a seven suplex. Uh, minimum limit. Uh, how about tonight? Just keeping it around three, dude, and I'll sell right. the f out of every single one. Sure, right. he did seven right. anyways. Right, exactly. Right, it's like, bro, it's unnecessary, dude. All right, so Ro so Bray comes out, huge pop, and the, and the the visual before Bray comes out is pretty cool, where they turn the arena dark, everybody's got their phones, the lights, and everything. Okay, um, so he blows out the lantern in the middle of the ring. Crouch, Crouch has welcome back, and so. He told the fans he didn't know if they could read it on him, but he's incredibly grateful and nervous to be there. Wyatt said this was just him and it's a version of himself they never got to introduce him to. He said he was being himself for the first time. He said he was emotional, said he lost a lot of things over the last year of his life. He said he lost his career, self-confidence, and two people who were very close to him. And Wyatt said he thought that everything he did never mattered to anyone. I was wrong, Wyatt said. Wyatt said that once he was done feeling sorry for himself, he went and saw people. They thanked him and asked him when he was going to come back home. And he said some people thanked him because they, they lost someone and lost their confidence, and they found Wyatt's words, and he saved their life. A loud thank you Bray chant broke out, and Wyatt said he could look all the fans in the eyes and tell them that they were there when he was weak and vulnerable. You all saved my life. You wouldn't let me alone. Uh, every time I tried to run and hide, you were there to find me, and the lights went out again. In a video playing on the big screen with the new Wyatt Mass, a distorted voice came with him because he, because life is it said life is over. It said you have no idea what you're dealing with, but you will. And the Wyatt family sound aired, and the new insect logo appeared on the screen to close the show. So I, you know, I'm I'm assuming okay because this was a weird promo because it was basically uh, what's his real name? What's Joe? Joe what's Bray Wyatt's real name? Wyndham Wyndham Rotunda. Okay, Wyndham Rotunda. This was a basically Wyndham Rotunda, a guy with with 
it's, you know, everybody knows has had mental health issues and stuff. Thing cutting a promo, and they segued into okay, well, this is we're going to do character stuff here, and I'm like, okay, are they doing like? Is this got me thinking like, what are they doing? A multiple personality disorder guy, or like split personalities or stuff? Because this was um, this is this is this is a weird segment to me. You but I'm like interested. I'm I liked it, but I'm interested to see where it's going because I'm puzzled. Right. I don't, you know, I'm, when I'm puzzled and I can't figure out where they're going, I'm, I I kind of like that. I don't, I don't want right. to be like, you know, like things. I'm like, okay, this is, this is intriguing. Okay. What, what are they doing? Cause like, what, what if they do a thing where you play a guy and it's like his character is like, we go in and out of like the performer behind the curtain, behind the scenes, his real life. And then we segue into he basically he's brainwashed into being this character on TV and he's like a split person out. So, so what, you know, I, you know, they, they, they already did that with Mick Foley, you know, 20 something years ago. Cause he was dude, love mankind and Mick Foley. And it was like all three completely different personalities and, and cactus Jack and cactus Jack. So it's like, I'm wondering if like, it's been so long. Okay. Let's try this with Bray Wyatt. Cause he can play a bunch of different characters and you know, play them well. So it's like I don't, I don't know. I, I heard that like, you know, that that this is all Bray, and they don't know where it's going. About, you know, the reporting on that. So I, I don't know, whatever. But uh, but I'm interested in it. I, I think it's intriguing. I, you know, I want, but but he's but he hadn't done anything yet. He's just kind of come cut some promos. Okay, who's his first issue going to be with? That that's what that's what I want to see. You know, so we'll we'll see where it goes. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I thought it was an excellent ending. Very different. Uh, and it was like, uh, didn't sound like he was cutting a promo and, um, he should be the one creating that. It was his idea. He should be the intellectual author. He should be the one that decide what to next. So I trust his vision and I'm just sure we're in for some, some good surprises. Whatever he's coming up with added to whatever triple H and the writing team, which is on fire right now, I think we're going to have some really cool coming up. That's what I feel. Right. Um, what do you think about when a couple weeks ago when he debuted and Dave said he looked really fat? Did he look really fat? <laughs> How could on you the- notice that, bro? The like it was dark. They had a spotlight on him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. He did. He does not like in retrospect. Does he look as fat as Dave kind of like reported that he looked? Nothing where I would notice it. Right. You know, and go, right. wow, he looks yeah. fat. Yeah. Right. Nothing huge. No, no, no different than he was. Right. Before, that so. was a weird statement. Yeah. So uh, that's been our uh, our SmackDown review. Enjoy the rest of the show. Boom. <laughs>